Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Let's talk about dearth for a little bit and what you need to do. We've talked about this briefly before, but maybe trying to go into a little bit more detail of what it is. Uh, dearth is when you're, it's, it don't, it doesn't always pertain just to beekeeping. Dearth means without. It means, uh, and without in beekeeping, it means without nectar without pollen, without resources for your bees to feed. And it's a certain time of year that hits every year. And it's more, sometimes it's more worse than others. Sometimes uh, you may have a real good year where you, you have just enough rain, but there's always gonna be dearth just at different levels and different degrees. Now. In the spring of the, the year here in North Georgia, when it's mid-March through April into May, there's lots of nectar. It comes from the trees. It comes from the clover, the dandelions. It's, uh, it's abundant in huge amounts, very huge amounts. So huge that if you would even lay uh, sugar water or honey out, they ignore it. They wouldn't go near it. Right now, if you would uh, lay out some sugar water anywhere near your hives, anywhere in the yard, within minutes, they're gonna be all over it. And that is a huge sign right there that they're being depleted. Uh, that's one thing you can do to test. You can lay out a little bit of honey, a little bit of sugar water, and if they tear it off, tear it up very aggressively, aggressively, not in uh, attacking you, but just wildly grabbing it and just acting like crazy bees, you can pretty much assure you're in dearth. Now this uh, pollen feeder that you see me talk about a lot, uh, we're still not in deep dearth, as I'd call it, uh, to where it's really, really bad. Because if it was, they would be all over this pollen feeder and there's nothing. So apparently there's still pollen out there available and plenty of it. As you can see right here, we got white clover and it's pretty abundant, you know, it's everywhere. You see the bees all over it. It doesn't give a whole lot of nectar, especially when it starts getting dry. So, so the bees are still have plenty of pollen. Now come August, when this stuff starts going away, you'll see them start tearing this thing up. You can see right there, I just shook it down a little bit and uh, there, there's no bees around it anywhere. So apparently there's, they, they still have plenty of pollen coming in. We'll watch these little eight framers right here, just see if we can see some pollen coming in. Um, so far sitting here, I haven't seen any. Okay, we'll wait here and see if we can see any pollen coming in. I haven't seen any yet. Look at him attacking that drone right there, right there. Almost like, you know, in the fall, they boot the drones out. It was kind of early for that. I'm not seeing much going on, but you know how pollen is. It's not, you could come down here at, at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, and they could be bringing loads in. So it just all depends on the, the time of day. But they're apparently getting it somewhere because... If they wasn't, they would be they would be all over. Oh, and if any of you are wondering or curious about the wire here, these are the hives that was over at the Freeman farm, and uh, they was needing moved. It's uh, you can't keep them over there year round. They do have bear problems. Uh, they was going to spray their apple trees, so they told me. So I, I went ahead and rounded them up and brought them home. Didn't want to risk them getting sprayed, any chance of that. So, so that's the reason that this, this is where I transported them back home. I went over there and uh, put the hardware cloth on them at night, strapped them down good. It was an easy job. It just, it's all about timing with that. You know, you go over there after dark, there's one right here going in with a little bit of pollen, but not much, not much. Uh, one thing I wanted to address, you know, when it comes to, uh, talking about hive beetles and wax moths, had a lot of comments about people saying, well, you got good strong colonies, you shouldn't 
have to worry about high beetles and wax moths. Look, that's true. That's absolutely true. But the thing is, we're not in the business of raising all strong colonies like this. When you're selling nukes, you can't have strong, thriving colonies. And also, if you're a beekeeper that does splits, same, same scenario. You can't always have strong uh, colonies with, you know, 50,000 bees. It just, it's, it doesn't work that way. Now, people that raise just honey, and that's all they want, and they don't do splits, well, that would be fine, you know, you could, uh, but, but if you do splits, and you sell nukes, you're gonna have colonies where their population is low. Their population is low, you uh, can be in danger of wax moth and high beetles. So that's, that's why I talk so much about that. And, and I do understand about the strong colonies, but it, it's just not the, the case. Not everybody has those strong colonies, you know, depending on what they're trying to do. You're trying to reproduce more bees. Why, well, you know, when we talk about high beetles and wax moths, that's the reason. So I just wanted to address that right there. Now, now speaking of which, in dearth, beekeeping. Keep in mind, new beekeepers, those of you that got bees this year, and you're just like, this is so easy. I never knew beekeeping was so easy. It is when you first start. When you install that first package of bees. And you're in the middle of the nectar flow and everything's going right there's you don't have any predators you don't have the the hot beetles the only hot beetles you'll have if there's some that was wintered over from the year before because they're just not that many around wax moths are non-existent at that time of year uh yellow jackets are not here uh there's no robin uh what else there's no dragonflies trying to kill your returning queens um there's no purple martins at that time of year you know, a lot of birds will eat your bees. So beekeeping then is so much easier. And then what happens when you come in July and August and you start in the dearth? And then next thing you know, your bees are robbing. Your bees, your strong colonies are attacking your, your weak colonies, going in, killing the queen, uh, and destroying the colony. And and then we, we haven't had yellow jackets yet, but they're starting to show up. So they're going to start increasing right up through fall, right up until frost. And that's another thing. I've had so many comments on that yellow jacket trap that I built. So I'm going to make a video from start to finish in deep detail how we made that trap. And uh, so everyone will, will see it because I've had so many questions about it. And then the, the, the question that, that, well, the comments that killed me the most was people saying, why did you put that right on top of a colony? They said, uh, you're, you're attracting the yellow jackets right to it. Well, here's the thing with that. That colony was being attacked by yellow jackets. And I tried to explain that in the comments, but you got to explain it so much, you just finally get tired of commenting about it. Uh, they was attacking that colony. So what I did, uh, I closed it off or just left a little tiny entrance for the, for the bees. And I put the trap on top. That's what I completely closed it off there at first. Put the trap on top it intercept it intercepted those yellow jackets it was the only way now another way i could have done was just completely move the colony out of the way but at first i just closed it up put the trap on top got their attention they started hitting that trap i slowly started open up underneath and then they stopped they stopped going in the colony so that is the reason if anyone <laughs> wonders why it it, it wasn't done that's the reason I did because they was already attacking that colony. So, but I'm gonna go in deep detail how we made one. We'll make it from scratch and show it. And that's what I, you gotta get ready for stuff like this. Get you one of those made. Uh, you may not have problems in your area. Some, some years we don't have many yellow jackets. Last year wasn't too bad at all. Year before was horrible. And uh, it just, a lot, of, a lot of it depends where they set up, you know, they. Could have had colonies in ground somewhere just right here close that I couldn't see or find. But uh, start watching all, out for your uh, hive beetles. They're going to start coming in like crazy, the wax moths. Uh, so dearth can be bad. 
it's a bad it's the hardest time of the year maybe next to winter of losing your bees so it, it's you'll find out really quick that beekeeping's not so easy once you start getting into dearth so uh and then another thing this is the time of year that we stop feeding the high top feeders and we go to external feeders about a football field 300 feet away at least we go about two two to three hundred feet away open feed i'll put a link in the description in the upper right hand corner you can see uh where i had a video on open feeding in the buckets in the five gallon buckets and i'll also put maybe on the bottom right hand corner uh, how you can construct those so that'll help out new beekeepers i highly advise a lot of people don't believe in it external feeding and they say it spreads uh, diseases and, and such. And I try to go and explain to people about that too. Uh, but some people just don't understand, maybe never will get it. These bees in dirt are going somewhere to feed. Even if you're feeding a high top feeder, they're such in a feeding frenzy at that time of year, they will go to your local McDonald's and, and go through the dumpsters, dig it out. Um, spilled pop products anywhere people's trash cans they will go into anything so you're not going to stop them from getting into a sugary source somewhere and they will be in and they will be mingling with other bees as well so it, it it doesn't make any sense it you're better off to keep them in your own yard as much as possible that's how i see it you know keep those feeders there and you're mostly keeping them in your yard externally feeding. So that's the reason I do that, and that's my thinking. Never had any trouble with it, never had any disease pop up from this. So, uh, but you know, you gotta make your own call with that. My opinion, that's what I say to do. That's what we've done for years. And I know a lot of very successful beekeepers that's done that for years. And no one's, uh, none of them's ever had any issues or problems with it. So you, uh, do what you want on that but but i'll put the videos there where you can see also you know somebody said the guardians don't work well look it, my opinion on that is somewhere in that hive you got a crack or a crack or a crevice something that those beetles are sliding into because i've watched these things closely and the beetles they just can't figure out how to get in there but that's another one of those things it's uh that's your opinion if you if you don't like them but i'm telling you they work in another thing too like i talked about if this killer hornet ever comes by they'll not squeeze in that thing they'll be excellent if that killer hornet ever comes around and they won't get past that they're just uh they're way too big they're way too big to fit in that so your colony would be safe for that reason folks it's all about management when it comes to these bees um it's all about management. You just got to take care of your bees. That's why we need beekeepers. And that's why I keep talking about that over and over is bees in the wild, they're very rare. And people talk about catching wild swarms and stuff. And I, can, I could go on and talk about this forever and stuff like this. Uh, most of the time what people are calling wild swarms are swarms from somebody else's colonies somewhere close by. If not, they're one or two generations from that. So keep that in mind too. As far as a wild, genuine wild bee, they're just not out there anymore. They're very, very few of them out there. So, so that's about it. I'm gonna stop rambling because I can talk on and on about dearth and and uh, what you need to do. But just uh, take care of your bees, manage your bees, don't give up on them. Uh, encourage people to to become beekeepers. And help share your videos. It helps the new beekeepers, especially people that's never raised bees before. Please click on the little bell, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Bees.